Ni huevo vale fuera ya. Cafu va barata. Fue un foco de la cueva tú. Casa mayor si vos se va a tinta me va con una banda. Vos se va a citar tan abana mayo vale ni la ve muapa. Casa mayor de fuera y huevo y le huevo es si muapa. Lenta experiencia. Hola, cane huevo. Mamá y Manuel. Vos se va a casa mayor. Vale. Good day. Today I made a satirical post to draw attention to the 2022 Corruption Perception Index. If you haven't seen it, as published by Transparency International, get a, a, a record of it, get the, the report. It simply states that corruption is on the rise and there has been no changes in perceptions in corruption, especially large scale corruption. So I made a satirical post uh, and it has drawn a lot of attention and I think I've achieved what I wanted to say is that corruption remains a cancer. It's as high as Zambians complained before 2021. And I personally have demonstrated that corruption is on the rise. I have drawn concerns to the abuse of the Public Procurement Act number 8 2020. I've said Zambians must familiarize themselves with this new law because this law promotes citizen owned companies. It promotes that Zambian companies should get these, all these large tenders, whether it's in fuel or fertilizer, whatever government is procuring should go to a citizen-owned company first. And you have to familiarize yourself with the Public Procurement Act number eight of 2020. I know there are a lot of um, uh, procurement methods. There are about 13 procurement methods, but the Public Procurement Act says the preferred mode is a national bidding one, where then it allocates uh, the outcome to a citizen-owned company. But this is being circumvented in the purchase of medicine, in the purchase of fuel, in the purchase of electricity. Pause. Remember that I took the matter of Zesco spending $107 million using direct bidding methods to circumvent what the law says. And they gave this $107 million of, of, of procurement of wooden poles. They said they were uh, an emergency procurement and they used the direct uh, bidding method. But I demonstrated that that was an act of corruption. I proceeded to report to the Anti-Corruption Commission. There was an issue of uh, the Permanent Secretary at uh, Ministry of Tourism who unilaterally canceled uh, 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 a legitimately procured process of hunting licenses and agreements. I took the matter on and I demonstrated that that was, that was an act of corruption and an act of abuse of office in the manner that they cancelled the tender, in the manner that they cancelled the agreement, and in the manner that they fired the Director General at National Wildlife and Parks. I have demonstrated time and again and I've reported to ZPPA, to the anti-corruption, about my concerns around these large-scale acts of corruption. But maybe first Zambians don't bother to read. When you write an article, you pack it with facts. They don't bother to read. 
Currently, the last three days, I've been writing about a procurement going on at the Ministry of um, uh, Mines, where the Ministry of Mines started a process in 2020, audited this account, it's called the Environmental Protection Fund, contributions from mining companies to mitigate any disaster in relation to the environment where they are involved in. And the contribution of reason we, from what we are getting in excess of $35 million since uh, 1997 when the fund was set up. So the ministry is in the process of picking what we call a fund manager who should then manage this fund. In fact, the proposals from, I'm told from the audit is very clear. It says these funds should be broken up to main fund managers, not to one. But a procurement has been done where this has been given to African Life Insurance um, Company. And uh, you are aware that this company is public knowledge, is associated with the president and with his business uh, associate and partner, Muna Hantua. And I've raised these concerns that did the president declare interest? Did the president uh, express uh, interest to, 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 to show that you know, he owns this company, either by association or as a beneficial owner? Uh, some people are saying, no, 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 he resigned from all companies in 2019. But his business partner, who he holds businesses in other companies, is in the in that firm. So I rave, I've been raising these concerns that did, did this process follow those issues? These are legitimate concerns. Zambians, our leaders are elected to be accountable to us as a people. Our leaders are not our gods. Our leaders are not our masters. And these are sessions that we shouldn't raise legitimate questions when they arise. Uh, I think arises from our traditional setup where we look up to the chief or the king and you know it's a top-down approach. This is democracy, this is governance, and we have to ask these legitimate questions. $35 million is a lot of money, and if the procurement is obscured in matters that are not transparent, matters that are not uh, uh, fair, we have to raise these concerns. What did the Auditor General's report state that you, do you bundle this entire fund under one fund manager or do you distribute it to other fund managers so that there are several fund managers? For me, those are my concerns. I'm aware that my satirical post brought insults, brought anger, but that is the purpose of that cause. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, corruption is on the rise. The Public Procurement Act is being abused. They are circumventing what it has provided for, that citizen-owned companies should be given these large-scale tenders. Any money that, are, money that are come from parliament should be expended in a manner that follows the Public Procurement Act. And the methods they are using of direct bidding or single sourcing are provided for, but that process is being abused. Just now, I've got uh, uh, you know, uh, a tender over fertilizer. The ministry wanted emergency procurement of 17,000 metric tons of um, urea and basal, and they quickly shortlisted under direct bidding. And that contract has been canceled or deferred. I think it's, it's a trick because the shortlisted companies were the ones that had raised concerns in the first bid. They are the ones that went to court that this bid for fertilizer to procure over 300,000 metric tons of fertilizer is corrupt. It has been a, a legitimate one has been cancelled. Another process has been, uh, has been uh, engaged that wasn't clear, that wasn't transparent, that smacked of corruption. So they were given these 17,000 metric tons to procure. And now we have correspondence that is showing that even that tender is cancelled. You can see that it was a trick for the farming season to be completed, the distribution of fertilizer to be completed, and these local tenders not to disrupt the process where government had awarded foreign companies to supply fertilizer. Colleagues, those I think, I thought I could explain mine.
a satirical post. There should be many of those if that is what is attracting your attention. Because if we inundate you with documents, you are not reading. If we do written posts, that explains exactly what I'm writing and what I'm alerting you, that you should help us in fighting corruption. Corruption was a cancer under MMD. It was a cancer under PF. Should we allow it to thrive under the UPND? If presidents continue to be involved in acts of corruption, for me, it's time we put a stop to this. It's time we call out any president, whether it is President Naka in the Ichilema, whether it will be Emmanuel, whoever it is, let's hold them accountable. And we'll do more satirical posts to draw attention to these serious matters. With those few remarks, thank you for joining and hope you are enjoying that satirical post. God bless you. God bless our country. We shall succeed.